Peace, everybody. This is Skates. Yesterday, I uploaded a video in regards to the new updates for uh, Machine and the Sounds.com integration when that wasn't even the conversation I should have been having with y'all. What I really should have came to y'all with was the new information about Complete Control. So just to give a little backstory on how Complete Control works, it's a VST that's a container. It's not an actual plugin, but it's a VST that's a container that can be used to manipulate all of your sounds and you can actually drag all of your sounds, plugins, uh, samples now as well through this and use it to play different scales and sounds, arpeggiators, um, all of the above, the same exact way that you would do on the machine controller, but you could do this with your actual keys and you don't need a keyboard to do this, which is why it's the biggest major key. Um, so the main reason why I wanted to bring this to fruition is because because I don't have the money for a complete control keyboard, because I don't just want to get the A25, I actually want to get the uh, S-Line, I want to get the S49, because it has the screens on it, just like Machine has the screens on it, so I've been holding off on getting that. In the meantime, what I've been trying to do in the background is find a way to actually map any kind of sounds or anything um, from complete control using the keyboards and the uh, controllers that I already have, be it Ableton Push 2 or the Emmett Audio uh, keyboard that I have. And it was a lot of uh, running around and a lot of things that I couldn't figure out doing, specifically using these eight NKS knobs or um, native knobs, as they call them, I think um, is the actual term. So what I was actually doing was, and I just pulled this random round sound up so I can show you. I would hit the configure button and hit this button to bring the knobs down and click all of these. And then what happens on the Ableton push, it would actually bring up a different bank for each of these different eight knobs. So you can use all of the different eight knobs and you can click uh, banks one through however many banks you have until you fill it up. The problem with that is if you were to pick a new sound, none of these parameters make any kind of sense at all. So you would have to go back through and remap all of these with all of these different voices again. But now that we have this, this is something that's no longer needed with the newer update. What it actually allows you to do is to map any regular controller that you have to the actual complete control software so that you can go about using it as if you already had a complete control keyboard which is something that I really dig. I was on the fence as to whether or not Native Instruments was gonna do this and if they were just gonna keep it proprietary, but they didn't. So now what you do when you wanna go about mapping anything or any kind of parameters inside of Complete Control, the only thing you have to do is click this MIDI button here. You'll see you have the parameters for knobs and for buttons. So to be able to map these, the only thing you do is click the knobs that you wanna go about mapping and you turn it. And I'm just using my Ableton Push 2, so I'm just turning these different eight knobs there. For the buttons, you can actually select which buttons are going up and down, and I mapped these before, and I'm just doing this for the sake of the video. So you want to choose your up and down buttons, your left and right buttons, and then there's a second set of left and right buttons. And then after that's selected, you no longer have to select that anymore. So let's see exactly how it is that that works and let's put it to the test. Choose something out of form. Any random sound. And I have my Ableton push in the, uh, the user mode. So we'll go here so we can make sure. Yep, working. That is lit. Yeah, that's crazy. Now, what I don't like about this is that what I don't like about it is that for some reason it's going from one extreme to the next. It's not going from like one to or zero point one all the way through. So I don't know what that's about. And also it's playing it as if it's a note when I turn anything, which is crazy as hell. But again, that's probably because, yep, yeah, it's just because the eight knobs on 
the uh, complete control can be actually played as regular notes and not just um, used as knobs, as crazy as that sounds. But the functionality does work. And if I was to press the up and down buttons as well, it does allow me to go ahead and select different sounds, which is cool. I'm pretty sure if I was to go about mapping this for my machine MK3, it would do the same. Um, you know, just to put this to a stress test, I think I'm actually going to create a new template inside of controller editor just for this. Just like an empty standard whatever type template. And this one's never used for anything. It always just says template one. It's never used for anything. So we'll select that. And then we'll go back here. I unmapped everything. Let's try doing this with the machine MK3's knobs that I have. So learn. Oh, it's not working for machine MK3. You know what? What's crazy to me is I always said that the same exact way that the complete control is able to uh, make any type of changes or adjustments with the eight parameters and select anything through the browser from the actual hardware on the complete control keyboards, so you should be able to do the same exact thing with machine inside of complete control when you're not using um, machine inside of another DAW. So I think that's actually something I don't know if they overlooked or something that they never seen potential in, but it actually could work. I don't I don't really see why it is that they don't see that that would be something that would be profitable or something that that could work. But um, I tried and I guess it didn't work. So um, hopefully that'll be an update. The other thing I wanted to take a stab at and uh, to test live was to see how complete controls ability is to load samples now and it automatically should pull. It doesn't. What? Wow, that's crazy. So it doesn't pull all of your one shots that you have already like loaded in machine. I thought that it would automatically does that. do that. It doesn't do that, which is crazy to me, but that's cool. Whatever. Uh, let's go to the GOAT plugin or the GOAT expansion, I should say. Just grab anything. So it is, it's the same exact sampler from machine. With all of the same exact parameters from machine as well. Um, and you turn loop on, actually it looks a little, it looks like the sampler from machine, but it actually functions like the sampler from battery for any of you people who were around in the battery days before machine took precedence. These young whippersnappers don't know anything about that. So yeah, I mean, pretty much it's the same exact thing. Um, you can set your loop point. If loop is on. Am I doing this right? I don't think I am. So that's the start and end point. It says that loop is enabled, but it's not actually functioning like the loop is actually on. Why? What's going on with that? Oh, you got to be on ADSR for it to loop. Some I actually don't use ever inside a machine. I normally use the uh, the simpler, the sampler plugin inside of Ableton. And that just turned the release all the way up. I'm trying to see if I can get it to play and then play to the end the way that it works inside of Ableton. Crossfade works pretty good. But yeah, it doesn't work at all in one shot. One shot mode, it just plays straight past. Um, oh, you can't just double tap the way that you can with a machine to make it pitch back down. 
start works the same. Decay. All the ADSR stuff, I'm pretty sure, works the same way. Volume. So yeah, the sampler looks pretty lit. Um, of course, you got the sounds.com integration. Um, and if you see my last tutorial, you'll know exactly where all of this is coming from. Can you actually chop in here? That's the question. All right, shut up. Oh, so ADH or AHD. I'm about to say ADHD. You know what? I think it's just the sampler, but it doesn't actually give you the ability to chop. Yep, that's what it is. Is just see the voice and the engine settings, the pitch envelope, effects filter, modulation. Um, now, of course, I'm only working on like an extreme cases basis to see exactly what's going on. But yeah, it doesn't allow you like if I didn't have machine or I didn't have Ableton, um, then I'd be like, oh, damn, I was expecting this to chop the way that you can chop in like an Ableton or you can chop in a any other like situation. But yeah, it's just a sampler. It just literally plays the sample. That's all it does. No chopping capability. I wish you could actually choose different parameters or a second, like let, if you had a second keyboard, would it actually allow you to use the knobs for like a secondary keyboard or a secondary instrument if that's what you plan on using. But I am a big fan of the functionality. I don't feel as it was perfect yet. And that's only because of my experience that I had with my uh, Ableton Push 2. But I'm pretty sure if I use like your regular standard keyboard, I wouldn't have the experience that I had. And that's only because Ableton Push 2 is mapped for different parameters for a completely different set of uh, use. But um, that was all I really wanted to highlight. Um, thanks again for watching. Again, my name is Skates, and y'all have a great day.